anytime I'm not playing Final Fantasy, I preferably will be playing Skyrim VR. Or, or Elder Scrolls or Online. Or Elder Scrolls right? Online. If, if my brother's home, I can't. I don't like putting the VR thing. <laughs> You're too embarrassed to be in your own... No, universe. I just don't like any connection. Like, when I have the VR on, I don't want any thought in my head about what's in the room with me. That's you know like, what I mean? Yeah, I like that. Like, if he's sitting at the table, like, on his computer, I don't like having that in my mind, you know, yeah, it bothers like you're, me. You're having spatial to not reasoning be getting in the two pure, places. To not be getting the pure, like, disconnection from my reality, <laughs> if that makes sense. It does. So I only play when nobody is home, and I can just, like, put it on and not take it off for a long time. Well, it's just like, you know, it's like he's in my mind by being in the room. Right, you know, it's right. Like, like he, he could like ask me a question and then I have to like take the headphone off or the headset off and yeah. or not the whole headset but the head the earphones the headphones, headphones. Yes. yeah yeah and yeah. and then he talks to me and then after that interaction is over I don't feel like pl- I'm like I can't really right you know. you've been taken out of the world exactly yeah yeah I don't want I don't like that. whoa buddy well someone's in a hurry to get to fries oh shit. <laughs> Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 3, Episode 24. That's right. We're deep into the very special pieces coming together territory yeah. of the show, of this game. I mean, this is season. really, this is the the last things before we're going to go into this finale. Yeah, we're. I think we begin this by, like, pieces that we forgot about are falling into place. Right. Like, the game is really going, like, it's <laughs> getting finished. Yes. And I, we, we've had in our minds, like, we've made th- two attempts at this magic tower that haven't worked, mm-hmm. so we know that we're going to do that. <laughs> yeah, I do remember the magic tower was, like, a, the biggest goal post right. for me for, like, the end game mm-hmm. We stuff. When we've beaten that, then we know that it's probably time to go to Kefka. Yeah, and there at least won't be anything else that is, like, harder than that, you know right. what I mean? Like, yes. once we beat that, anything that's left, we can probably just, like, scoop yeah. up into the dustpan. You have to have really high-level magic in order to beat that, so it's like, what else is there? Yeah. What else could there possibly be? We're gonna find out right now. <laughs> well, what, Our, Jeff, what is there? I'm so excited. <laughs> well, let's get started on the episode then, Ryan. But but Jeff, I gotta know now. <laughs> well, let's, not later. All right, now we're doing it now. So, where we left off? I mean, I know there's the magic tower and the uh, Kefka tower, and the Kefka tower, I believe, has two of the dragons in it. And mm-hmm. the magic tower has the other one. Other than that, are there any towns in in destroyed universe that we have not visited that we should? I don't think so, but I don't know. I didn't make a new map and we didn't check them off, you know? Yeah. Duncan's still alive and well, he's meditating just north of Niersh. Who is Duncan? I don't remember, but this is his wife. Duncan. Oh, how could we remember Duncan? I, I don't... I can't believe that it even came out as like us being like, maybe we know that? Because... Isn't he Vargas's dad? Yeah, he's like l- from literally so episode early in the three. Game. Yeah. Episode three of this season. Yeah, he's like from when you meet Sabine, that whole saga. And you don't meet him then. You don't meet Duncan. You just know that he died and it's a problem. Right. Just and remember, the last thing we knew about Duncan is that he most certainly was dead. He was killed by Vargas, right? We killed Vargas because he was dead. Right. Like, like we, we, we murdered this guy. somebody. Yeah. Let's go see what's north of Narsh. Yeah. I mean, probably we should just get our main crew to level 99 because mm. we don't want to stop playing the game. Yeah, I know. Well, like, <laughs> the way we'll do that is by checking towns. All right, so north of Narsh. There's like a tree right there. I don't know. We should also figure out what the deal is with that rock. Oh, yeah. I'm going to do a Google search for craziest secrets in Final Fantasy VI. Yeah, let's let's do a little bit of that before we... Does this ring any bells? This little grouping of trees? Oh, wait. What, what is this? Duncan! Duncan! I was like a weird grouping of trees. Yeah, the way it looked on the map was like five trees lined up like a cross. Yeah, it's it's like a hidden location. It doesn't yeah, look like a... It doesn't look like a home or anything mm-hmm. like that. And so I was surprised to find him here. Well, and if we could have remembered who he was, I think we would be surprised for more reasons than that. Right. 
Who is this guy? Wahaha! Why did he, why the surprise face? Is he the you guy that I supposedly gone? his son killed him? When we went and got Sabine, they were like, Master Duncan is, is you know, gone or whatever, because his son killed him. And then we killed his son, who was like, I killed my dad. Yes. Yes. And yes. Now he's because like, ah, I, okay, just, because I was like, I, I feel like I made a, a reference to Macbeth that I was wrong about because there was a Hamlet element to it, and it was because Duncan is a character in Macbeth. Right. And I was like, I knew that that had happened here. So ringing any bells yet for everybody <laughs> I, out I there? I love like I'm telling you about a thing that happened entirely internally in my mind yeah. about like a joke that I realized wouldn't work, and so I remembered this <laughs> character. I know it's like we've already explained who this is, and then it just gets like so confusing because you're like in my brain. <laughs> These are the steps I took to my memory palace. <laughs> yeah, <you're> <laughs> this is my memory palace. Here is where I keep the memory of master duncan <laughs> beside yeah. macbeth right like nothing is organized there's a picture <laughs> of an emperor i can't believe no one has done a joke like on rick and morty or something of somebody being like and welcome to my memory palace and it's just a mess <laughs> <laughs> like, you can't it's find anything in so this place organized <laughs> sabine this can't be tears are you crying for me wah ha ha nothing happened to me the earth yawned right open <laughs> To take me, but I scrambled to safety. But I thought you jump up on you. I That's what I thought happened to him. Maybe I'm thinking of somebody else. What happened here? Do well, I need to look this up right now? Here's the thing. I don't know that we need to look anything up. It just is a scene that is incongruous with what we know the story so far to be, which is that Master Duncan was killed by his son, so we avenged Master Duncan by killing his son. We get here. Master right. Duncan is not only alive... But he's going like, ha ha, I bet you thought I died when the world ended. Which and we're like, like no. no, I thought you were already dead when that happened. <laughs> right. Which is like, are we just avoiding the awkward conversation of like, I don't know if you know this, but we killed your son. Right. Like, we're just, n nobody's wife, bringing this up. We've met his wife at one point, right? Yeah, we met, we've met his wife a few times. She like hangs out in the inn or whatever. But like... <laughs> This is so bizarre. Or so he went to live in some tree outcropping. Then why don't we meet Duncan in the first half of the game to begin with? You know, he's like dead. Why do we kill his son? <sighs> well, anyway, <laughs> this that's is... what happened here. He's jumping up onto he's the roof. He's a karate master. Sabine, it is now time to complete your oh, training. Shit. Use these new skills to smash Kefka. So this is where you get Sabine's ultimate blitz moves, right? Yeah, Master Duncan teaches him, like, his top-tier blitz move. <laughs> We're slap fighting on the roof. This wow. is amazing. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> I call this the bum rush. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we got his ultimate uh, thing, which we probably can't use. And it's, there's no way it's as good as his attack. Cause, oh, wow. Well, <laughs> nothing is as good as his attack. Well, I'm... Thrilled to have found him. He wasn't exactly Yeah, north. that makes me think there might be a couple th little things like this that we've missed. In the long list of unsatisfying side quests that we've had, which range from Gao, which is like satisfying in certain ways, to Siegfried that turns out to be nothing at all, with Realm and Owser's house in between. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to put this low on the totem pole, like lower than Realm and Owser's house. Right. Because it's like one of the main characters we've known from the beginning. It's such a tossed off thing that's right. not even a story that doesn't even line up with the last beat of this story. It's right. completely out of nowhere, and I'm giving it a thumbs down. An official no one can know about this thumbs down. The patented no one can know about this thumbs down. Don't worry about me. Go destroy Kafka. He's just an old man. He's coughing and weeping. Like, uh, what if we take Edward and Sabine back to the, their castle in Figaro and go into the throne room with them? Is there more shit for them yes. to do? Yes! Great fucking thinking! It is great thinking, but I don't think we even do that. If we like, if we take Tara somewhere, can can we find her Esper people? You know, is but there... look at the way they hid this place. Oh, there's just like a weird formation of trees. Yeah, that he's in the center of. Whoa! Wait a minute. What? What? When you get Locke in the world of ruin, take him to Narsh and visit the old man hiding in his house. He will hand over the cursed shield, and believe me, it is definitely cursed. What? 
It will tag you with almost every status effect in the game, and the only way to lift the curse is to fight 255 battles with it equipped. Once the curse is lifted, you will get the Paladin Shield. Whoa! <laughs> do we want to do that? I mean, that doesn't sound like it's... I mean, I don't know. <laughs> 255 fights? That doesn't fights. sound good to me. <laughs> It's like we're at Disney World, and I'm like, we haven't been on the AT&T ride yet. And you're like, where is that? And I'm like, it's all the way in Epcot. It'll take us an hour and a half to get there. But by the time we get there, we can make reservations at Chinaland oh for my dinner. God. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, like, we, we did we say we home. would do it all. We can just no. go to the hotel. I'm like, we said we would do <laughs> we it all. We would do it all. <laughs> Like we committed to that idea. Yeah, we st we still haven't been on that jungle ride from the fifties. <sighs> I don't want to go on it, <laughs> but we said we would do it all. Actually, I think it was the Southwestern Bell ride. That Wait, giant. This is at, real at Epcot. Yeah, that giant ball. The original ride inside oh. of it was like the future as brought to you by some telecom company. <laughs> so it was like you would get in this like little monorail seat. Yeah, it would like take you around the inside and of the was, ball. It was like, like a ball was like five. Minute out. ride. <laughs> it was like never ending. <laughs> and, and it was like, yeah, it, it took you on like a path where you'd just see like animatronics while like a 60s announcer guy would be like, it'd be like cavemen and he'd be like, since the dawn of time, man has prayed for telephones. <laughs> and then you'd go through and it would be like, and in the future, IBM will own Mars. And you'd see like spacemen floating around like a thing in space. And it was so like, like It's not about communication, it's like cave. <laughs> Man. There, <laughs> if only they could call one another. It's the worst ride, but there was never a line, and it was air conditioned. And I don't know if you guys know this, but Disney World is in Florida. It's fucking hot and humid. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so I'm just saying that's one thing. Let me see if there's anything else I can find. I don't think we want to do that. Right? I don't really want to do I that. I don't want to do that. To get to the top of the Fanatics Tower more easily, just bring Mog and have him wear the Moogle charm. The Moogle charm is in the world of ruin where Mog was standing in his cave in Narsh, just stand there and press A to get it. He might have a relic that's like, no fights. No fight time. Oh, here's the hint for Shadow. This just passes over you. <laughs> I thought you would react to this information like, what? We can go on without fights? I don't think I realized what you actually meant. <laughs> yeah. Which is like no random encounters anywhere. Like, well, we can I did just... say it like a baby. I was what? like, we have no fight time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I was like, yeah, cool. Awesome. Like, I didn't know if I thought it was more like Chocobo in certain areas. I didn't realize like in a dungeon, you can run through it yeah, without the Moogle charm. fucking put that having on. any fights. But I mean, you know, I'm just saying we could just take Mog, Mog with us into the, the magic tower to not have to fight on the way up to the top. That's what oh. we could use it for. I don't mean in the final dungeon. I just mean like right oh now. Oh my god, I didn't even think about quick. that. You're a genius. <laughs> Dude, I didn't. I wasn't thinking clearly. Yeah. <laughs> we gotta go back to Narsh to get this thing. Okay. Narsh, the land of all the secrets. Sabine is like... If you were on a team of superheroes and one of the superheroes was Superman. Yeah, pretty and much. And it's like, can you just, like, do the thing? Because you're the only person that we need. The developers considered having a scene in a bar where Strago asks Shadow to reveal his identity, but they didn't put it in. Because Strago doesn't know who Shadow... Like, Shadow knows who he is, but nobody knows who Shadow used to be. And there's no way to get them to... I don't think so. Now is probably the only opportunity we're going to have to discuss the merits of how Shadow's story is told. So Right. So, yeah. Shadow is Realm's dad. Mm -hmm. Strago is Realm's grandfather. Is, like, Realm's grandfather. So that means that Strago is the father probably. of the woman who came out in that cutscene right, and yeah. found Clyde. Yeah. So Strago is probably Shadow's father-in-law. How did the woman die? Do we know Realm's mom? Um, I don't think that we know. Or maybe Strago said something about that. I'm not sure. It's but not a situation where it's like she died in when childbirth. When Shadow left, and then she was Shadow alive. was like, I blame you, Realm, and I leave. No, if anything, I think it was like Shadow left before she was born. Okay. Because he was like. I, I, I'm with the wind. The point is, like, Shadow's story is this thing that could have been played for, like, massive dramatic. Yes. Potential. 
potential. <laughs> right. But instead was played like, it's like you find out his past, but he never reveals this to right. anybody. Like if you put the pieces together, you can realize that there's a meaningful connection here, but it never plays out in the story in right. any meaningful way. Which is like, is on the one hand, like pretty interesting and also, in my opinion, ultimately unsatisfying. Well, it's unsatisfying <laughs> because it's the most dramatic, maybe most interesting story yeah. out of like all of, almost all of the characters. Yeah. It's like so dramatic. And it's like, you know, how great would a scene be where like Strago realizes who, it, you know what? Right. I guess I could see the reasons for them not doing it is that it would be so much to unpack. Like, right. Can you imagine that being revealed at this point in the game? Like, well, how would you deal with the characters just moving beyond that and then to be like shadow is realm's father and he doesn't care and doesn't want to be in her life and we're gonna all continue on as a group now well, i'm saying like if like, we all confronted you... shadow then he would like be like i'm gonna be realm's dad now which wouldn't be satisfying yeah, either huh. so it's almost like they did the only it makes sense why they landed on what they did I but it guess. also is like feels like a thing that should be way bigger than it is well how great would it have been if gao could have gone to realm and been like, I know something about parents who desert you. Yeah, I mean, also think <laughs> you about, and I are the same. Think, anyway, anyway, that's the deal with Shadow. Shadow, Shadow is like a terrible absentee father and a murderer, and that is the story. There and is he no... hangs out with his daughter, but won't let her know. <laughs> he's like Mrs. Doubtfiring her as a ninja. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> when he tells you he's killed all of his emotions, that's not to like lead you into a story where that reverses itself. No, no, that's, that's just like... the fucking truth, <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's it. <laughs> and I kind of respect that because that's totally not a way anyone in the west would ever go about telling a story no that's like a haiku yeah nobody would nobody totally. tells a story about how it just is no the, they yeah. tell stories about how things could be right <laughs> but this is like and redemption the op- this is, and yeah, changing this is like the opposite and, no this is like <laughs> <laughs> wow that's kind of amazing when you look at it like that yeah all right you can like piece this past together but you can't you can't fix it <laughs> Let me see if there's any more Terra story too, because that felt totally lacking. Yeah, I mean, if we're gonna level anywhere, we should level fighting dinosaurs, right? Yeah, that was my thought. You should save after a lot of fights, though, because you might run into a br- Brachiosaurus and just I like get your shit your kicked in. Game. <laughs> this is why I was I was kind of hoping that would happen, and what I didn't think about was so I should save often, and that's why you need two minds. Did you ever think you'd be going in for a voluntary walk in the woods? <laughs> <laughs> well, this is be- it's not really voluntary, because I think that we need this fucking flare before we go up this... Uh... No, we don't. It's, it's going to be one of the things that we can actually do to affect the guy. Right, but we learned if you cast Berserk on him, then he stops changing the Right, wall. right, we figured it out. So long in that fight was just like... Us not even doing anything and going, what is how? How is it? <laughs> what? I was sitting there going, really like, fucking confused. Going, we like, be hurt. like, how can we even lose so we can try again? You know, like, did we just break this? Like, what? <laughs> well, we didn't run into the Brachiosaur today. Gotta leave something for that second playthrough, you know? Mmm, good point. I mean, in all honesty, someday I probably will play this game again. This game's amazing. But I don't think that I'm gonna, in a replay, be like, now I get to do the Brachiosaur. Whenever I replay this, it's gonna be a long time from now, and I'm gonna just be focusing on all the old, the good, the bigger stuff, and I'm gonna be like, I don't need to fight that Brachiosaur. Do you wanna handle this? Sure. <sighs> get mug in your party, get everybody equipped with wall rings. All right, we're really gonna pwn this place now. Oh, yeah, we are. Yeah, so we got the Moogle charm, so we're going to be able to just walk all the way to the boss of the mm-hmm. tower. Mm-hmm. We've been leveling up our magic and stuff in the dino forests, and we've been reading about what's left to do, and most of it sounds totally unappealing, so yeah. we're going to go do it. <laughs> we're going to go do the magic <laughs> tower. It's also that, like, we've learned the magic we know we need. Mm-hmm. We're ready for this place, finally. It has been such a buildup to actually beating this. It really has been. It was one of the most satisfying parts of the game. Let's Let's get to it. Let's get to it. So so now Mog is wearing something where we're just going to walk right up the tower. Yeah. Let's time it. Let's see how tall this tower is without any fights in it. Because it's tall. Well, because I told you I looked at the clip from last night. 
and the all told from walking into the tower to to losing to the boss with the Ultima move, mm-hmm. it was uh, over an hour. Felt like nothing. I was like, uh... I was like, no, this was a long time. That was I was crushed when he hit us with Ultima and it worked because I was like, it's just, it took so long to get here. Because then what it was was it was 40 minutes of walking up here. 40 minutes of walking up here. Mm-hmm. And 20 minutes of looking at the boss, changing walls, going, what is he doing? Why is he doing that? Yeah. Are right, you ready for this? Mm-hmm. This is the dragon that we've already beaten that's in this tower. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, this guy keeps being like, dispel! Yeah, dispel. he's like, it up. It's not. Why is the... Do you have a ring? What the fuck? That breaks the game. What do you mean? Yeah, I couldn't remember exactly why this guy isn't a threat at all, but I just remember <laughs> him not being a threat. <laughs> Man, I was hoping some of these dragons would give us, like, a would be something that we're like, fuck, we, like, need to level up to, like, 70 to fight this thing. There it goes. Can you imagine being high enough level to just beast your way up this tower without the wall rings? <laughs> Somebody I might. Guarantee guy, you I bet you there's a video it. of it. Yeah, look at how fucking tall this dude. I can't believe you're so right about getting this fucking charm. <laughs> as soon as I... 40 remember, minutes. Like, 40 minutes, yeah. dude. <laughs> like, we don't... He can just not do the thing again. 40 minutes became five, including the dragon fight. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> of course, because the random encounters are, are way more than half the time that walking mm-hmm. around takes. Oh, definitely. I think that just, like, illustrates how much more than half. But one thing I love about this is they're, like, this whole tower is they're, like, okay, well, you want to get the treasure on top? Well, you've got to walk to the top, which mm-hmm. we're going to make as hard as possible. Right. Hidden in the world, like, is a solution to this problem. Right. Like, you, if you find the Moogle charm, you don't have to walk to the the top and then once you get to the top it's like well you still have to be high enough level to well, fuck him well up. you have to have life three right otherwise you won't be able to win right but it's kind of like i love the way that it is very directly like a problem with a specific solution mm-hmm. out there to find yeah and then we found them and now we're doing it like that's <gasps> just in time yeah i don't know for sure but i think we're gonna see as the games progress problems like endless towers mm-hmm. with no solutions no Like, that's what I think is unforgivable, Okay, is if that kind of shit happens. Well... You know, like, imagine if there was, like, a hundred floors, and there is no, like, clever way around it, and mm -hmm. if you get to the top, you're probably gonna die, and you have to just do the whole thing multiple times. Oh, there was a hundred floor thing in In 15. 15, which we got lucky because there was a glitch, and it was like, there were no monsters in it for some reason. Yeah, but there was no way around it. it forever to run through it. (laughs) Oh, boy. You're right. Yeah, this is the real way to do it. The only time you would ever really want that charm is like this. Yes, and I am so happy. Good thing, good thing there's no way we could have found that charm at, like, the beginning of the game. Because you could oh, easily be like, could... oh, Mog is my man. We just put that on. Well, that's enough rope to hang yourself <laughs> yeah. with. But I'm proud of us. We It's like we really learned our lesson. We didn't we didn't run our way this whole game. Yeah. We just were, like, not going to yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. This is the first time we're kind of running away from fights. We've made it to the top, and the Magi Master floats up as a ghost. Mm-hmm. He's flying around the top of this thing. <laughs> Do you think that this guy's going to be, like, super pissed off that nobody in the tower did their job? Like, they showed up full health, full of tinctures. What are you guys doing on the tower? What, are you, what were you doing on the way up here? You should berserk them. Oh, you know what I need to start doing? Casting Life 3 on my party. Uh, how long does that last for? Until they get KO'd. It's okay. Life 3. Did you cast it? Yeah. Okay, sweet. I think it penetrates Reflect, too, so... So we quickly make it to the end of this fight. Mm-hmm. And we've cast Re-Raise on everybody, or Life 3, and he ultimates us, and everybody's dead, but then and Life then they come back to life. This is also returns. satisfying, because we haven't even used Life 3 out <laughs> in the wild yet. Right. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, baby. What a spell. What a fucking awesome spell. So it's like the first time we use it, and it all works exactly like it said it would in the instruction booklet. <laughs> That's always satisfying, <laughs> <Yeah>. right? <laughs> wow. We got a gem box. Right. What's the deal with the gem box? Catch this treasure. I don't know.
The gem box is like the magic equivalent of the offering. The yeah. offering being the thing that lets Sabine do eight attacks at once. Yeah, it doubles up your magic, so you can cast, like, fire three twice. Yeah, so you would give this to Celeste or Terra. Which also gives them the awesome ability of both doing damage and healing in the same turn. Yeah. Or, like, casting a buff and bringing someone back from the... It's, like, it's so, powerful. so useful. Whereas, like, the problem with buffs most of the time is you don't want to use a whole turn to cast haste or something. Exactly. It's, it's great. It's it, a great addition. It's one of those things that it's like, yeah, fucking give me... Make me overpowered. It's, it's yeah. I've played 100 hours of this game, or 60 or whatever, of this one. Give me something awesome. It's the kind of thing where if they gave you both of these at this point in the game, they could probably continue the game for another 30 hours just based on how it deepens the mechanics. Right. You know, like it yeah. allows so much more. But instead, it just put makes <laughs> Mercifully, you... they don't do <laughs> they that. They don't do that. <laughs> so because we have Mog, we'll walk out. Otherwise, I would say teleport crystal. Well, I want to go to the bottom of the thing and find uh, mm. Strago. You would be fighting your way down right now? Yeah. That would be... Bullshit. Unless it got rid of the random encounters, I don't know. And they'd be like, use teleport crystal. You're at the point in the game where you should at least know to be able to do that. They would be right, too. Strago, what is going on? I beat that guy. Oh, I think we should try giving that guy should another we bring one realm thousand. here. So Strago isn't coming with us still, and even though we know the clue, if a loved one calls out the name of a member of the cult of Kefka... Dot, dot, dot. Well, <laughs> we decide probably what we need to do is, like, pay this guy for another secret. Well, I need to give him a hundred grand again. <laughs> I, I thought that, like, beating the magic tower would break I the spell. I did, too, yeah. So I did, too. I, but they did say, yeah, but no, we're going around. And <laughs> going, there's got to like, be something we can do here. I'll take another hundred thousand dollars for that same clue. I'll give you a hundred grand for the old man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should I give him money? Let's see what happens. Ooh, wait. I have the same plan for you. All right. Probably could have walked out and saved before doing that. But who gives a fuck? Are we really going to run into some situation where we need another 100,000 gold? We can't buy that airship model. So we go get Realm, put Realm in our party, and come back to the Magic Tower, because mm -hmm. we do figure out, like, right, a loved yeah, of one. Of course, and it's the, the, the all of these scenarios seem to be triggered mm -hmm. by, like, party context. And also, it's like, if you bring Shadow here, <laughs> that thing that's happens. not enough <laughs> of a loved one. No. Realm, is that you, my dear? You're alive. Touching. Boo -doo -boo -doo -boo. Nobody died. Kefka's not that bad. <laughs> of course I'm all right. Oh, I'm so happy. Did you think I was gonna check out before you, old man? Ah ha ha ha. No, I was living in some like fat pervert's basement, <laughs> painting pictures. <laughs> yeah, like the fattest man that looked like a toad. You're as foul mouthed as ever. Bless your heart. What are you? Can you tell us what you're doing here? Whoa, you've well, been. Be right back. You've been. In the cult of Kefka? Can we trust this guy? I don't know. I'm getting the sense, no. He's back. So, we could have done that before going up to the top of this tower. Yeah, if we just had Realm with us. Well, should we get our team ready and go to Kefka? Do the final dungeon? I think so. We are, uh, last I mean, night when we ended, I was like, there's way more game. No, I think we're really And you were pretty sure, the and then, like, as soon as you left, I thought about it, and I was like, maybe... I mean, this final dungeon will probably take a while, but I don't think it's gonna... I mean, I don't think... I don't think it's gonna be like the moon when we were underleveled and just, like, couldn't... Can you imagine if we... We just haven't been running... We've been doing all the side... I really yeah, think we're Can you imagine if we were as powerful as we are now in 4 and we got to the moon dungeon? It would have taken us, like, an hour. Yeah. <laughs> if we had gone to Kefka's tower as soon as we showed up in the post world rather than done all of the things that we've done, you it would be they probably give, impossible. This one as opposed to four is like they give you stuff to do to level up. Yeah. You know? Rather than just go for a walk in the woods. Here's here's a thing that you can do that will not only give you an awesome weapon, but you're gonna in the process of getting it be leveling. They've figured it out. <laughs> Man, I really didn't think we'd be ending this game with me going like, eh, Tara, you're just not A-team material. <laughs> I didn't think so either. Like, you're just not that interesting. But you know what? I, that might have been different if we had just walked back into that town. Even if we had gotten her, I like Celeste more. I like her whole plot and her character yeah, and everything she's about a really her more than, more than I like Tara. Yeah. 
What is the gem box? That's what we got at the, of course, it, tur- X magic. Of course, there's X fight. You can X magic. Just as there's the ground, there's the underground. <laughs> and like the fact that you find it at the top of the magic tower being guarded by the magic master, of course. Yeah. Where did we find the uh, offering? It's like, I thought maybe it was guarded by the king of physical attack. No, I don't think we've fought anybody like that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's time to break into Kafka's domain. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe we're here. Almost here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But for all intents and purposes, we're here. We get on the airship, we go up to the big wheel, the the, dry, the steering wheel. <laughs> the, the bit, that's the big wheel. <laughs> and, and it's like, is, are you ready to fly to the floating, co- or not the floating continent, are you ready to go to Kefka's tower? Right. And we go to Kef- we're, we're like, yeah, we're totally we're, ready. We're There's totally ready. There's nothing left. There's certainly nothing left. Oh, you go in from the top. Mm-hmm. What's wrong? The statues give the espers the magical energy they need to live. If we destroy the statues, what what will happen? The espers and the magic too mo- will most definitely disappear from this world. Mm, you guys want to not do it? What what will happen to Terra? Terra's like, whoa! You guys didn't tell me this was what we were doing. <laughs> When we click on the thing, everybody's kind of like, wait a minute, is this a good idea? Yeah, Celeste brings up the sort of awkward point (laughs) that no one has broached yet of like, Terra's kind of magic, and if we destroy magic, then perhaps Terra... Will be partially destroyed? And at least I was sitting here going like, wait a minute, we're going to destroy magic? (laughs) (laughs) Like, that's been our plan? I don't want to do that. (laughs) Magic's awesome. I love it. <laughs> Once again, Tara is like at the mercy of everyone around her constantly. Yeah. She's the least active protagonist I've ever seen. I know. If she is the she's protagonist, she's just a victim. Right. She's literally <laughs> through constantly and through. a victim. From her infancy, she is a victim. <laughs> she even finds a place in the world where she's like, I just want to help orphans, and everyone's <laughs> like, Sorry. <No>, sorry. <laughs> We gotta go kill you. Come with us. <laughs> Come with us and kill you. Help us kill you. Form three oh, no. groups. Oh, really? Do we split up the court? Do we split up our the pros from Dover? So when you go into Kefka's tower, it's sort of like Locke's dungeon, where you've right. got to have three people solving puzzles for each Instead of two, it's three this time. Right. Three groups solving puzzles for each other. But who is going to make up these three groups? We have 14 people. Right, and you run into this problem where you're like, well, we never used Mog because we don't like him. <laughs> so like everyone has to take some kind of hit to their party. Right. You know, like you've got to have somebody undesirable in every group. And you got to have somebody desirable in every mm-hmm. group. Yeah. So like we have our core team of four, and we got to split them up. Yeah, I guess we should probably split up the pros, huh? Because all Tara of our know any magic at was, all. Yeah, right. Because we were learning she... magic for the first half right. of the game. Okay, all right, all right, yeah. We can go on a little uh, brachiosaur hunt. A little brachiosaur hunt with some of the non regulars and get some spells out there. Did or we could just do it. Before? Or we could just yeah, do I it. did. Like I said, we have these four people who know a ton of the spells, so as long as one of them is with the other people, like, it should be okay, right? I mean, Incestor's not bad with magic. Realm and Strago are really gonna suck. I don't know what to do about them. <laughs> they gotta go to the bathroom. Well, we could make a party of Terra, Realm... Strago and Shadow and go on a walk in the woods and teach them a bunch of stuff. That sounds honestly easy enough and worth it enough that let's let's make let's X out out of, out of this. So we decide, which is the start of a pattern, to not go to the tower just yet. We take our shittiest players and go for a walk in the woods. You know what's funny about this? Is thinking back to last season when we went into the final dungeon, but we weren't ready. And I asked you right. if we had gone in and died uh-huh. and we left to go level up, like what would have been enough for you? You know, right. like the mentality of like, I was sitting there going, I want to make sure that we can do it. Mm-hmm. And you were going, I want to hit that like bottom line. Right, no. But then you don't know what it is. And I feel like... <sighs> Now we're sitting here and you're going like, let's try and make sure we hit that bottom line before we even go for attempt one. Yeah, I think <laughs> you're right. That like, first of all, I'm shell shocked from last season. Still. Yeah. So I, I, there's that. But I think also there's the fact that that 
whole decision process last season mm -hmm. was based on us wanting to finish the game. I know in two it was days. a different scenario. It was like so it's not it was a three a.m. We were committed to this, and it was like, but I don't want it to last till noon. <laughs> yeah, you know, like there was, was calculus that was going on there that we are not doing. That here. was a different situation, but I do right. feel like we've already attuned ourselves. We're more leaning into like what we know the game expects of us, right? Rather than like what we hope the game will offer us. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we. Reset. Just the the four worst. Teach them some really high level spells. Yeah, it'll be all right. And maybe we'll get lucky and see a brachiosaur. So there are fourteen playable characters in this game. Some people would say that's too many characters. You might. Some people would say that. So let's get to a little grinding. Oh yeah, grind time. Yeah, how funny was that shit about Del Taco? I just think it's hilarious that you drove to another McDonald's. Like how, where was the other McDonald's? It wasn't that far. I Googled it before I just went go, well obviously, otherwise I, I wouldn't have known mm -hmm. where it was. But yeah, there was one on Vermont that was kind of down the street. Okay, so I, just for clarity, I'm telling a story about when I tried to go to McDonald's's. And I went there, and they were closed, too. Oh, right. I but totally they were both, this. like, two different McDonald's's that were 24 hours were closed. Two 24-hour <laughs> McDonald's's. Both of them closed. And I wound up going to Del Taco and discovering the world of Del Taco. Which got me excited because I loved the world of Del Taco. <laughs> <laughs> but really what blew me away the most, more than what was written on the burger thing at Del Taco, was the fact that the burger was really good. Yeah, I think their, their burgers are good and... A lot of their other food is good. The thing is, is some of their food is legit terrible. Like, like so <laughs> fucking bad. But some of it, I eat I eat there, like, all the time. It's my go-to, like, I don't have time to uh -huh. eat. And I, like, I'll get a chicken quesadilla there. It's cheap, and I don't feel, like, total trash after I eat it. Right. Because the chicken there is pretty good. All of their burritos are, I, my experience is that they're really bad. Yeah. I was just like, this burger's amazing, and then it was like... Like, look at you, you little fucking trailblazer, you. Yeah, on, like, the box that the burger came in was, like, this long poem to a, to the rebels. Mm -hmm. Who order burgers at Mexican taco places. Yeah. You ordered a burger at Del Taco. Now, like, people wouldn't do that. But you're not most people. It's like, call, call, like, why are you, what, what, why did you feel the need to do this? Because they're catering towards people who are, like... A burger at a taco place? Like, don't you think that's, like, all weird? <laughs> They're, like, being like, it's okay. And yeah. I was like, I didn't yeah, know. Yeah, they want the... And I was like, I was like, look, I'm so far gone, I didn't even know it was bad. Oh, does anybody have the experience egg? I put it on Realm. Nice. What the fuck? What? Why do I have Mog in my party? He's still called Strago. I think it's like a... a oh, is it his armor? Is he wearing the Moogle suit? He might be wearing the Moogle He's suit. He's wearing the Moogle suit. See, we're gonna grind with these people, and we're gonna fall in love with them as, <laughs> as characters. And we're gonna be like, they're awesome too. And then we won't be like, oh no, three teams. We're gonna be like, oh yeah, three, three teams. teams. Yeah. What do you think Mog would say if he was in the party? as well about Strago. I wish he would say something, but what I think he would say is absolutely nothing. What if he was he like, not, I don't this is would... this is an appropriation of my culture. <laughs> I don't think you realize how offensive that is. He's like, uh, back during the great Mughal diaspora, <laughs> your people did some horrible things to us. <laughs> and... Uh, while we try to move on, like, you're really rubbing it in my face right now, Strago. Because we, do we need that many sketches, or...? I mean, it would probably be good to fill out uh, Strago's abilities, but uh, yeah. at the end of the day, it's not that important. You're hungry now. I'm starting again. Should we go to Del Taco? I mean... <laughs> I kind of think we should. I would totally eat at Del Taco. I mean, we don't have to do that. I'm just saying an added bonus if you eat inside is they have a salsa bar with acceptable mild salsa that you can't get in the drive-thru. It's different than the packets. Really? It's like salsa in a bucket and a thing that you have to put in a cup. And they don't ever sell it in the packets. 
No, it's not. It's not in the packets, There's, and they won't give it to you in the drive-through because they don't have any way to do it. It's just like I think we're going to the Del Taco. Yeah. Why don't we get to a point where we're like ready to walk into the tower? I think I also hit this really lucky moment that you can sometimes hit with a late, late night at a fast food place where mm -hmm. there's some kind of turnover that just happened on all the food. The fries were hot, hot, fresh, and delicious. See, I think that might just be the case more often at Del Taco because, like, the fries, they don't serve with a lot of the meals. So they, so must, they, they make might them. make them when you order them. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know about the fries. I don't get that often, but almost always the food I get there is... At McDonald's, there's totally that thing of sometimes you're like, this burger patty is crusty. Like, yes. this has been out. Yes. And I don't think that ever happens at Del Taco. I was, like, um, I I was think, really I impressed the, with the I don't burger think patty. they are set up in They're, the same way where they have, like... Well, that it, it did explain a lot when they were like, you don't... You don't do what most people do. You ordered the burger. So, the, yeah, I guess that they have to be making them more I freshly. I would probably just cook it thin. One thing that I thought was great was, like, the burger patty was incredibly small and thin, but there was two of them. <laughs> As you know, you got two of them. Well, I have one when you can have two. But they're, like, even with two of them, they're really, really small. So, yeah, they must cook like that. See, I, I was sitting there, like, looking at the menu for a while, like, I don't know what to do. I know that I, I I know that I wanted McDonald's. I know that I I had like committed to wanting McDonald's and realized like oh, McDonald's of like oh, the world over is closed. You just opened like a whole new window into a new fast food. As soon as I got home and tried the burger, I knew that that was the case. Let's see where we are with these espers. Pretty excited about it actually. Del Taco. Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. It made a good first impression, you know. The thing is too is. Del Taco is fucking cheap. Yes. <laughs> like I was amazed. Really? Like, I was my amazed. My dream of how McDonald's could be <laughs> I don't think I would trust Del Ta Taco at all if it were any cheaper than it is. I don't know that you should at its current price. I like the idea that it's even like when you sit down for that meal before going to the final dungeon, you're like, wow, we've been to everywhere, guys. We went to that town and we bought that stuff. I know. And we, then we went to that other town and we bought that other stuff. And oh then that God. thing happened and you changed. You you got new powers. Odin became another thing. We hardly even knew Odin. But I like the idea of it's like, no, but it's at Del Taco. So that's episode 24. <laughs> We're about to go to the final dungeon, but we're stopping off for that final meal that all of the characters usually have around a campfire or something before they or go to the dungeon. Or at a dirty table at Del Taco. That's your what local are. Del Taco. So that's where I think part one of the finale will start next week. At Del Taco. At Del Taco. Del Taco. Because we're going to go there and take stock of this game and... <laughs> Del Taco. Look, we're not getting paid for this advertisement. This is just genuine feelings about things that happen in the world. <laughs> you know, like just because sometimes, there's brands, sometimes that you Del end up... Taco makes you feel very deeply <laughs> about quesadillas. It's true, but anyway, I had just discovered it, and we're gonna go there at the beginning of next week. Next week is a two-parter. The finale, part one, starts with us going to Del Taco yeah. and having our final meal before the final dungeon. It's gonna be a fun one. Mm -hmm. We hope you. Have have enjoyed this long journey to it get to this point. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Next week is the is the big end to this whole insane debacle that has been season three. Yeah, and I mean, it's the ending to season three, but it's just the continuation of, like, this debacle that has been the past year for us. Well, that's the thing, is that, like... it's also, like, right... This, like, is, like, almost exactly a year since we started the podcast. Yeah, it has been an insane year, and it's been, like, a year of building two what next season is mm -hmm. but we're not there yet we'll get to that next season yes <laughs> with that please rate and review us on itunes you can find us at no one can know about this dot com at no cat podcast on facebook and twitter that's mm -hmm. n-o-c-k-a-t please support us on patreon we're gonna need your support over the next few months <laughs> you can find us there at patreon.com slash no cat if you want a billboard maybe we can start selling billboards for next season now sure yeah i'll take advanced orders on that sure <laughs> Email nocatpodcast at gmail.com with the subject line billboards, and we'll make that happen. And with that, here's a no one can know about this dessert made just freshly for you. Mm -hmm. Steaming pile of dessert. It's uh, rice mixed with marshmallow paste. 
and maraschino cherries. Welcome to the Midwest, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, we were talking about cults before we started recording, like C U L T. Like the weird, mm -hmm. you know, and my thought was to say Scientology, but I know they're not a cult, they're a religion. No, they're a cult, but the yeah, C-O-L-T, yeah. as in the three ninjas, not that. Yeah, not, not <laughs> Colt what and Emily. Names? It was, uh, yeah. Well, it was Rocky, no, loves, Rocky Emily. loves Emily. So Rocky Colt, Rocky Colt and, and Tum Tum. Kid, Tum Tum. Tum yeah. Tum, yeah. Not those disciples of Duncan. No. But cults in general, and whether or not any of them are positive.